Hi, everybody. Welcome to Read Fun Children's Books. Thank you for coming. I do hope you like this video. And please, don't forget to subscribe. In today's story, we learn the incredible journey that took Oprah Winfrey from humble farm girl to one of the most successful people in the world. Let's read Oprah, The Little Speaker by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by London Ladd. Her daddy was a soldier passing through and her mother went north to work as a maid. With a name plucked from the Bible, little Oprah was left with her grandparents in a rundown house off a Mississippi dirt road. God only knew what would become of that child. No indoor plumbing, just an outhouse, not even a bed of her own, sleeping beside her grandmother, Hattie Mae. Mornings, empty in the slop jar, drawing well water, and tending the animals, which Oprah didn't half mind. The poor farming family barely scraped by, but never went hungry grew a garden, raised pigs, cattle and chicken, and sold eggs. Mama, Hattie Mae, sewed every dress Oprah ever wore. Her only shoes for Sundays, weekdays barefoot, God guiding her every step. Mama, Hattie Mae, leaned on the Lord. God hears you better when you're on your knees, she said. Sundays, church from morning till night. Oprah watched wasps buzz around the ceiling fan to the beat of a hand clapping and tambourines. God sure could stir up a crowd. Every day, Mama Hattie read her Bible, read to Oprah too, taught her reading, writing, and arithmetic. At three, the child could read alone. On that farm, without so much as a television, books showed her a wider world, a richer life. At the same time, her first public speaking in church, no less. Little Oprah practiced so she knew the verse by heart. Jesus rose on Easter day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, all the angels did proclaim. And from then on, she was the first child given parts. God had shown a light on her. Soon, she was making the rounds at other churches, beaming as grown-ups called her the little speaker. Sisters fanned themselves, gush, that child is gifted. Mama, proud as could be, each time her grandbaby was introduced, little Mistress Winfrey, surely God was smiling too. Show off, other children teased, calling her Miss Jesus or the preacher. Some spit on her, picked fights. She quoted scripture to dodge fists. When church ladies dropped by, Mama shushed Oprah and shooed her outdoors. Mama said, children should be seen, not heard. A tall order for a chatterbox like Oprah. If she didn't mind her manners, Mama had a whooping in store. Fetch me a switch, she'd say. That was the way back then. During storms, Mama held Oprah close and said, God don't mess with his children, Mama said. You got to do a lot of work in your life and not be afraid. The strong have got to take care of the others. Oprah took these words to heart. Learn to lean on God just like Mama did. With only a corn cob doll as a toy and no playmates, Oprah befriended farm animals, named them, read to them, and gave them parts in games and made up skits. She even rode bareback on one pig. First day of kindergarten, Oprah wrote a note to her teacher. Dear Miss New, I do not think I belong here. The teacher skipped her to first grade. There, she finally found her friend, Glenda Ray. God did answer prayers. When anyone asked Oprah what she'd like to be when she grew up, she'd say, I want to be paid to talk. Back then, you could go a month of Sundays without seeing one black face on TV. Still, Oprah set her sights high as the heavens, as if she knew God's plan. On the back porch, Mama boiled laundry in a scrub pot that doubled as a bathtub. One wash day, she called Oprah. Come wash, child. You'll need to know how to do this someday. 
And Oprah said to herself, no, I won't. Lord knows she was right. Thank you.